welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Today I thought we'd have a bit of a chat about feeding fish fry. So if you've ever tried to raise fish fry and you've ever sort of had them in your tank or anything like that, doing it on purpose or otherwise, you'll know that they can be an absolute pain to feed. They are absolutely minuscule and the feed that they need is really quite specific and a lot of them will only take live feeds which only makes the whole challenge even worse. And so today what I thought we'd take a look at is some of this. This is green water. It sounds like it's something that's really, really posh, but it really isn't. All it is is any old water that has a free-floating, single-celled algae suspended within it. So it's got quite a good population in this one. You can see that it's quite a strongish sort of colour. It shouldn't be absolute pea soup, otherwise you've probably got more bacteria in there than anything else. But this is what we can use to then grow on our fry. It's not actually the algae that they eat, it's the bacteria that's living inside it, as well as the sort of tiny little microorganisms that live in there as well. But not only that, we can use green water to grow Daphnia, which are water fleas who eat algae sort of pretty much exclusively, it's their only real diet. And so thinking about that, let's have a little look at how we can culture some of this. So the main thing that you need to remember is that in order to grow, algae needs three things. Water, nutrients and light. You don't need to worry so much about temperature because the algae in your area will already have adapted to whatever your temperature range is. And so all you need to do is make sure that you give them those three things. And from here on, there are two different methods of getting green water that I tend to use. Method number one is by far the easiest, and all you need for this is a small pond with a few goldfish in it. Simple as that. As long as it receives some sunlight during the day, and then obviously you're going to be feeding your fish, and then their waste is going to break down in the water, and then that's all the nutrients that they need, and so you're going to end up with algae in the water. As long as you've got that really simple combination of goldfish in a pond that gets some sun, you will absolutely guaranteeably get green water. And it's exactly the same as the green water that you would be culturing any other way. You can just take this directly from the pond and feed as you will, and you will find that it has all sorts of life in there as well as the algae. It tends to be quite high in the little detritus worms, simply because there are so many of them on the bottom of the pond, but that's fine, the fish will eat those too. And obviously only use green water like this so long as you haven't added any chemicals or anything like that to the water, and also so long as your goldfish are also nice and healthy. Method number two is a little bit more involved, but it's also considerably less likely to introduce any pests or diseases from your pond into the aquarium, and that's by using the jar method. To do this, you simply take a jar, bigger the better really, fill it with water, any kind of water is fine, you can use the stuff that's come straight from the tap, although you will find it takes much longer for the algae to grow. If you can use rainwater or any kind of filtered water, then it's much better. Add some kind of fertiliser to it, this can be tomato feed, houseplant feed, I even find these little Tropica plant substrate pellets are absolutely perfect, they've got everything in there that a plant needs to grow. And then we place that jar into a strong direct sunlight source. That could either be a sunny windowsill, if you're lucky to have a lot of sunshine where you are, or better yet, use a daylight bulb, because you can control how much light it's going to be getting. Leave the daylight bulb switched on for 24 hours, and within a few days you should see the water starting to turn green, and within a week you should have a really strong solution in the green water. You might find that it's gone a little bit cloudy, like mine has here, and I think that's coming mostly from the pellets, from the tropical pellets that I've been using. Either way, I certainly haven't found that it's done any damage to fry or anything like that. I think it is just a staining that's in the water. But at least doing this, you definitely know that you're not transferring any nasties from your pond into your aquarium. How you then use the green water depends on what it is that you're wanting it for. If you're using green water to feed a Daphnia population, then you can just use pond water straight away and they will thrive in there living exclusively on the algae. For fish fry though, I tend to use the jar method simply because it's that little bit more safe, and I use it as a between meals feed. So the fry will get their usual diet of Hikari first bites or infusoria, depending on what I've got available, and then between times they'll have green water in with them, just so that they've got something to nibble on. And that's how I tend to use my green water, so I tend to stick with pond water for growing Daphnia, using for larger fish, whereas use the jar method for the fry. But anyway, that's literally just how I use green water. As I hope you can see, it's a really useful thing to have, 
As I say, if you can keep it in a pond outside, then it's so much easier rather than having to culture it every time you need it. But it is super useful and I think quite easy in order to keep. But I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Happy fish keeping everybody and I'll see you soon. Bye bye!